Hello and welcome to my watch reviews. Well today we are looking at a brand called Vario and in particular the one on the right hand side which is called the 1945 D12. We're going to get all up close and personal. That one is going to go on the microscope. We're going to look at the dial. We're going to look at the movement. We're going to test everything and you're going to get my conclusion at the end. So stick around if that sounds like your cup of tea. Now why am I showing you two watches? Well they are both my personal watches. I have a close connection with Vario. I know the owner uh, Ivan very well. They're just a family company, Ivan and his wife Judy. I'm proud to say that I do all of Vario's warranty work for the UK. So if you buy a Vario watch, something goes wrong with it, it's going to come back to me and I am going to repair that for you. Uh, Vario do offer a great warranty and they really do stick to it and I can obviously vouch for that because I have done their work. Fortunately though, haven't done that many, which proves that they are good quality watch. Before we get into the review, a quick history lesson. Where did Vario get its inspiration from? Well, it's getting it from what's called the Dirty Dozen watches, which were watches uh, made for the British Army in the Second World War. Now I'm going to refer to this website here called A Collected Man. I suggest you go and perhaps give it a good read. There's loads of information on here. But essentially the British Army gave out a request during the Second World War for uh, any manufacturers to be able to make a watch to their requirements um, en masse, obviously, for the troops. And those requirements were very, well, fairly basic things by today's standards, but possibly not back then. It had to be a black dialed watch. It had to have Arabic numerals. Uh, it had to have a small seconds at six o'clock. Had to have a railroad a minute track, because of course that is a lot easier to see. Had to have luminous hands. Um, the movement had to be precise, usually to chronometer standards, shatterproof plexiglass, and it had to have a big crown uh, in order for the guys, the troops, to be able to operate the watch with ease. Um, so 12 companies came back. Obviously, you've seen there was Omega, there's IWC, amongst many others. Um, They're all a bit able to use a little bit of license in their own design. Uh, and these watches, of course, now are absolutely iconic and very very collectible. So Vario do like to do military inspired watches. You saw the other one at the start of the video which is their 1918 trench watch which is something I'll be reviewing later. Um, so yes that's where it's getting its inspiration from and we'll cross reference that as we go through the rest of the view. So let's cut to the watch. Finally you get to see the watch up close and personal. We are filming this all outside. Now this watch was hand delivered to me by Ivan all the way from Singapore. That is where Vario are based. Uh, we sat in a pub and spoke for four or five hours all about watches and then he presented me with this one at the end. And I only felt it was fair that we give it pride of place on the channel to show you all. So looking at the watch, you can quite clearly see that it's got plenty of inspiration from the original Dirty Dozen watches, but equally with its own bit of modern day flavor. Now, first of all, this is gonna be made with modern day materials. So for a start, the luminous um, compound on the dial is not radioactive like the original one. So this is safe to handle. Now I've handled plenty of radium dials, uh, not something I'm a big fan of doing, but uh, I've done it for some of the restorations in the past. Uh, so this one, you're getting a look and the feel, but with the safety and knowledge that you're not gonna get uh, ill as a result of wearing it. Um, looking more closely, you've got that railroad track which is compulsory on these watches. But look closely at the 12 and you have that arrow design and that is the inspiration of the broad arrow which was on all uh, UK military watches at least. And um, yes, he's sort of designed it. Almost looks a bit Star Trek-ish, doesn't it, to me? But that is definitely a nod in that direction. You've got that sub seconds dial at six, which of course is um, a requirement again. I think it's done very well, very legible. The one thing about this watch, of course, is a field watch and you have to be able to read it clearly at a glance. And this one, you can do that just fine. Looking at the dial, you've got a lot of texture there. Now that clearly is Vario's own take on the watch. Um, the originals, I don't think had that and they've added that separately. I really do like as well how they've blended their Vario logo in, at, well, just below 12 there. 
and it's very discreet and to be fair when you're wearing this watch you can't always see it and i'm guessing if you've got one of the darker versions like the black or so it'll fairly much blend in completely which makes the watch look very sterile and that i think is actually a pretty good thing the version i have here is this sand or beige colored one which is quite nice but there's also three other colorways there's this lovely looking green version and that's followed by a grey version as well so plenty of choice and then of course the last one has to be the black it's the original of course but what I like about Vario here is these very subtle little details like the hands so on the cream version here the hands have a black surround on the black one because the markers are white the hands have a white surround the grey one has a chrome surround little things like that you don't necessarily notice straight away but it's just to accentuate the look of the dial and i don't see other brands necessarily doing that specific to each dial color which i think is very good loom shot time and here we are this has got c3 super luminova so it's glowing green the other varieties actually have a dual color so they have some blue and green for some reason this one only has the one uh, it was less than impressive probably the only downside of this watch uh, considering it's a field watch you'd expect it to glow better this kind of lost or the camera couldn't pick it up after 10 minutes you can still see it but it is faint and I guess the trade-off is that's because you are trying to tint the loom to look old and as a result you do lose the luminosity the watch has got some very wearable proportions here we go the diameter is 37 millimeters very in keeping with the original I would think thickness comes in at well we'll call that 11 millimeters again nice uh, lug to lug brilliant at 45 you can also see how the lugs are tapering there so that'll fit to the contours and the, the lug width is a strap pleasing 18 millimeters and there just to prove it is sapphire crystal it has actually got a little bit of ar coating also so what does that look like on the wrist well it looks like this and i put it on a different vario strap because they do make straps 37 millimeters i think is lovely it is that sort of vintage sizing my wrists are just the average seven inch can you notice how you don't see that vario uh, logo on the dial at all it does look sterile which i think suits the look perfectly let's turn our attention to the case finishing so you're looking at the top of the bezel there and you can see it's circular brushed on the sides of the bezel it is highly polished now that's quite a substantial bezel as well it gives a nice breaking contrast and it's a far cry from the originals because they were just military they would have just been bright probably chrome plated or something like that i'd imagine uh, you've got brushed finishing to the case but you've got those little facets to the lugs there you can see at that shot that are all highly polished if we then go to the sides we can see that it's all again brushed i actually like the shape of this case there is not a sharp edge to be found which makes it wear very comfortably you can also see here that it's got drilled lugs that's a bit of a feature rather than anything else because the strap does have quick release spring bars and i bet you're wondering when i was going to mention it the crown so this is quite unconventional and certainly vario's own twist on this particular model to stick the crown between four and five is definitely a bold move it's out of characteristic of the originals and that's what i actually like because it's their own twist we're not just trying to copy like for like the original the crown is still equally large and easy enough to operate it's actually a screw down crown because this watch is offering 100 meters of water resistance as well you can see that it's got the v logo on there and for the first time i've ever seen this although i think i've seen it in photos on other brands that uh crown uh, the v is actually loomed so here we go you can see it glowing in the dark there it's a really interesting feature um and i guess i suppose if you needed to change it on the fly at night at least you can do it it's case pack time and this one is actually very poignant and telling a story in itself you have a british soldier silhouetted in the middle there and he is carrying this surrendering white flag uh, for the battle of singapore where they were overrun and defeated by the japanese i believe it was the biggest uh, defeat 
uh, by the British Empire ever and they estimated to have lost about 130,000 troops many of those in POW camps so terrible for people in Singapore and for the British Army uh, likewise and the Australians and others that were there too uh, by contrast that is also silhouetted in white by a modern day Singaporean soldier you can just about make out his um, optical night vision there which I think is a really nice touch of modern and old and then around the case back of course we've got Singapore because that's where it comes from 10 atmospheres it's sapphire crystal automatic 1945 being the name of the watch so I think this is a lovely a very fitting case back uh, for the genre of this watch the irony of all of that though is that under that case back lies a Japanese movement so clearly the Japanese beat the British as well in what movement to put inside this watch. I joke of course this is the Myota 82S5. It's the gilt version movement. You can see it's got some Coats de Genève there as well. It's got hacking, hand winding, 21 joules and 40 hours of power reserve and of course will be pretty damn reliable it looks very nice and i think he's also chose this because you can also have a display case back option if you wish to buy that and then at least you've got a better looking movement than maybe the seiko of course here we are on the microscope i did promise you some microscope shots and we can look a lot closer at the detail of this particular movement um, i've worked on a few of these they're absolutely fine i'm not a massive fan of the, the myotas um they do things at a price, let's face it, and the rotor can be a little bit noisy and it only winds in one direction also. But here at least you get to see it all working and beating nice and fast and healthily. We will go on the time grapher uh, very shortly. Let's just turn our attention while we're on the microscope to the dial. So to get this shot, of course, I've taken the whole movement and dial out of the case uh, and we get a closer look at all the detail. You can see again the printing is slightly embossed and raised above the dial. It's done very, very well. Uh, the loom always seems to be within its boundaries as well. Uh, it's got a sort of gloss uh, finish to uh, the loom and actually the indices. And of course you can see that textured dial there too. Have a little look at the sub dial there. Uh, I think it's all marked very nicely. The hands again, I can't see any errors in the loom there. Just trying to get it in focus for you a little bit better but yeah it passes muster under the microscope certainly very nice i really do like that texture here's the inside of the uh, case back and apart from the fancy design uh, the www does not stand for World Wide web no that's actually a really interesting uh, nod to the originals that um, i don't think anyone else would have picked up on because you've got to take the case back off uh, the, that's what the original Dirty Dozen watches were known as, the WWW. The code was established by the British Army and it was to distinguish these from other military equipment. And it just stood for watch, wrist, waterproof. That was it. And um, yeah, Ivan's managed to add that in there. And what a sweet little touch that no one would really know, but he does. And I think that again shows you the level of detail that Vario do want to go for. Put in the movement for its paces here on the time grapher. Now each position is actually recorded over three minutes and speeded up. So you can see how the trace fares. Here we are, for instance, it dialed down and it's all pretty decent. Uh, when it actually goes to pendant up or crown up, we get a drop off and that can be due to gravity and a few other things, but in the main it's okay. And then finally crown down position and we're back to pretty decent running although the amplitude has dropped off a little and now the moment you've possibly been waiting for how much is this watch well here i am on the vario.sg website i get a pop-up here saying if i give my email address i get five percent off that might be worth taking up depending on how you value this watch uh, so if we scroll down we're going to see the different colorways and you can see here that they are 309 uk pounds which is around about 376 us dollars that does uh, give you three uh, free worldwide shipping but you might have some taxes in the country that you reside in here you can see you can get the case back as well or a custom case back for 
a different price. So it is on the higher side, £309 for a watch like this. You could get a different type of D12 or more of a copy for a lot less. However, I think uh, with Vario, they are offering their own unique style and um, that's worth paying for, definitely. Um, this has got all the characteristics of the original, but certainly the flair and the originality that Vario or Ivan and his wife have brought to this watch. Um, so for that, it has to come at a price and I feel that probably £309 is a fair price to pay for a watch like this. Um, I've been wearing mine considerably actually. I really do like these sort of plain watches. I've been getting into them recently. Uh, no frills, easy to sell the time, great for wearing at work and such like. So let's uh, just cut back and I'll give you my final thoughts. To be fair, I think I've covered just about everything. I think it's a great mix of new and old and a bit of uniqueness from Vario. 10 out of 10 for effort for taking an old design and trying to make it your own. They've definitely succeeded there. Um, is there any negatives? Some people aren't gonna like that crown, I think, but um, can that be a deal breaker? I don't know. Uh, and perhaps the choice of movement because the rotor could be a little bit noisy. Um, but there you go. I think uh, if you like it, then there will be a link down below. Please check out Vario because they sell lots of straps. They sell t-shirts and other watch as well. Uh, it isn't affiliated at all. Just go and check them out and have a look. Perhaps sign up for their newsletter. Uh, I will be reviewing uh, what you can see now. So the 1918 World War I trench um, watches. The one on the left there, the black one, is very significant to me it was a gift from Ivan he's actually engraved it on the back at a time in my life when I really needed it um, that video will be coming soon and there may also be potentially a raffle that I'll be announcing to try and raise some money for charity and to be raffling off one of those 1918 watches so thanks very much for watching this one if you liked it please give it a thumbs up uh, subscribe comments below I read everyone try to reply to as many as I can. I'll see you in the next review. Bye for now.